Welcome back guys! In today's video we're going to take a look at what happened in episodes 3 and 4 of the Netflix romance k-drama Business Proposal. Uh, so after the kiss, uh, Kang Temu proposed the whole uh, fake dating, fake relationship arrangement and then him and Shinari signed a legitimate contract regarding that uh, fake relationship. A classic. The main source of comedy and drama in this drama is still the fact that Kang Temu doesn't know that Shinari he's fake dating is actually the same girl Shinari who's working at his company. But that might just change soon. Anyways, about her work, uh, there is this thing at the company where they uh, collaborate with chefs to create new tasty recipes and Shinari's team um, suggested the handsome chef, Shinari's friend whom she had a crush on uh, and has a crush on, uh, as their collaborator. Shinari worked so hard to convince her colleagues and everyone at work that he is the right choice and she was so happy to tell him that he got a job but when she went to uh, his restaurant bearing the good news, uh, she walked in on the chef and another girl kissing. Apparently that girl is um, his ex and a mutual friend of his and Shinari's from college. Our girl was so sad when she saw them, she broke into tears and I felt so sorry for her. She just saw a guy she had a crush on for the past 7 years get back with his ex. Like she didn't have enough on her plate already, Shinari had to put her uh, fake girlfriend act on the ultimate test, the lunch with Kang Temu's grandfather. Kang Temu, his secretary and Shinari spent days uh, coming up with stories and memorizing uh, how the two uh, lovers met uh, and their efforts were fruitless because uh, grandfather really took a liking to Shinari and the lunch went great. Now, remember the tickets uh, the chef gave Shinari for her birthday? Uh, well, she brought those tickets to lunch and of course the grandfather saw them and told Kang Temu that he must go with her and put her above her work. Uh, then uh, he drove them to the concert and made sure they got into the hall before driving away. And at the concert, oh boy, uh, the band that was performing did this thing where they would take song wishes with each sold ticket and then they would draw a few fan suggested songs and perform them at the concert. Now because the chef was the one who bought the tickets, he was the one writing the wishes and of course his wish was chosen and his message read out loud. The message went something along the lines of him hoping that Chinari came to the concert with a boy because uh, she didn't have a boyfriend for the past seven years he's known her, I wonder why, uh, and then he asked them to play the song him and Chinari listened to in college. Shinari was sobbing throughout the song and uh, Kang Temu was noticeably bothered that she felt that way. After the concert, uh, Kang Temu comforted Shinari in his own style. Um, they were walking, eating street food, truly warm and sweet scenes were uh, filling up this part of the episode and then Shinari was hit in the eye by the baseball. Yep, that happened. Nonetheless, Kang Temu was also so sweet here. Uh, he went to Shinari's house to bring her medicine for the bruise and check if it's getting better. And the episode 4 is the episode where we finally see him catching some real feelings for Shinari. We're gonna get back at this shortly, but uh, now let's see what happened with our favorite, well, our other favorite couple, uh, Young So and Mr. Hoon, aka the secretary. Actually, as it turns out, uh, he's not just Kang Temu's secretary, he seems to have been adopted by his grandfather and thus is more like his brother, which explains why the two of them are so close. The one who'd really love to be close to Soon Hoon is Young So and she got the perfect chance when she moved out from her father's home, got an apartment and of course that apartment turned out to be next door to a Soon Hoon's place. We love us a good boy next door trope. But given his loyalty and the fact that Young So played Kang Temu with the whole uh, swapping blind dating debacle, um, he refused her offer for them to become friends. Back to Shinari and Kang Temu, their fake one year anniversary was coming up, so they went on a date uh, to please the grandfather, of course. That's not to say that either of them were forced to do it, that celebration is where Kang Temu started realizing that he might actually be falling for Shinari. When he saw her in that white dress, uh, clear his whole schedule to make the date happen, uh, how he looked at her, how he helped her with the dress and shoes, the fireworks scene. I screamed from cuteness so 
loudly during this episode, my roommate thought something was wrong with me. The cute romantic scenes made me realize once again why we all love watching romance k-dramas so much, they really are something else. But something just has to go wrong, right? Kangtemu uh, drove Shinari back home after the date uh, and then he noticed she forgot her wallet so he drove back to give it back to her, he parked his car and then uh, overheard her brother call her by her real name, not the fake name she gave him. Then he opened the wallet and uh, saw the ID with the same fake name, the ID and the picture of his employee, Shinari. Yup. That's the cliffhanger they left us with. That's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below for more K-related content. Next time, we'll be looking at the next two episodes of this drama, so be sure to join me. Till then, bye!